Hi everybody, it's just Mr. Moffy here again with just some quick coding activities that you can try at home. Now, this is a website that people don't think about straight away when they think of coding, which quite simply will get some really good effects. It's based on the micro bit. Now, you don't need a micro bit to be able to do these. If you want to pick one up, there's a new version that's just come out, a new one that's got a built-in speaker and microphone that you can pick up for a few pounds on Amazon. But you don't need it because there's an inbuilt emulator on the screen. So what I've done is I've Googled Microbit on and now I'm going to go on to the top option here and click on Let's Code. Now once I click on Let's Code, there are a lot of uh, different languages sorry, that you can use. There's Microsoft Make Code and there's also Python if you're feeling a little bit more adventurous. I'm just going to use the first one which is Microsoft Make Code and this looks a little bit like Scratch which the children are familiar with. So I'm going to go on to Make Code. Once you go on that, you bring up this screen. Now, to start a new project, I'm just going to click on New Project. Just before I do that, though, there are lots and lots of projects underneath that you can try if you want to have a little go at them um, when you've had a little practice at doing this. I'm just going to go back and show you how just to basically get started. So let's click on New Project. And what I'm going to do today is look at the different inputs that we can use on the micro bits. I'm just going to call it Inputs and then click on Create. Once I've clicked on create, it will bring up this workspace. Now, this workspace here with the start forever, these, this is the workspace where we put our blocks. Now you can see on the left hand side in the corner, we've actually got a micro bit emulator that you can see the results of your code on. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of these two blocks. We're going to get rid of on start and forever. And I'm going to go to the input section. And on this one, on the A button, now you can see here on the micro bit, we've got an A button and we've got a B button. So we've got these two options straight away for our inputs. So I'm going to bring in the basics and bring in this screen. Now this represents that screen there. So anything here that I click will turn these little LEDs, these little lights on the micro bit red. So I'm going to start off just by doing a very quick letter C for the first initial of my name on the side here. So once we've done that, it should be um, ready to go. So on the side, we'll just give that a little test. You've got the A button, so we click on the A button, that gives us a C. Now, this time we're gonna go and program something on the B button. Now, if I drag this one in, you can see that it's a little bit washed out. The reason being is you can't have two A buttons. So let's change that to a B button. So click on the arrow, click on B, and you can see now that that's changed to a deep purple. We're then going to bring the basic one in again, and on the basic one, I'm just going to do the next initial, uh, sorry, the initial of my surname, which is M for Moffitt. So I'm just going to click on that and then just highlight these ones here, which will make the display light up. So once we've done that now, you can see that this has turned red. We can click on the B button and we've got the M. So we've got the A button and we've got the B button. Now, there are two other inputs that you can use on the micro bit. The first one is on shake. Now, at the moment, there isn't a shake option there, but as soon as you program this, a little shake button that you can see now has appeared on the screen. So this time we're going to add something different. So I'm just going to show a string on this one. Now, a string basically is just a set of letters that scroll across the screen. So I'm just going to put in here MGL world which is the company I work for. And this time, we're just gonna give it a little second. This time it's turned blue. We click on the shake option. You can see now that MGL world is starting to scroll across the screen. The final input I'm gonna show you is a combination of button A and button B. Now, as soon as you include this one in your code, it will give you another button again for the A and the B option. So let's bring this one in. Now, again, it's washed out because we can't have two on the A button. So I'm going to click down. You've got a choice there for the A and the B button. Now, this time, what I am going to do is on the, this one is just to show an icon or a little emoji that's already been programmed in. I'm just going to do the first one, which is a little heart. You can change those by clicking on the arrow. Or you can obviously create your own just by using the basic one. I'm just going to use the heart for now. And then you can see now we've got the A option, we've got the B option, we've got the shake option, and we've got the A and B option now. So let's just try the one that we've just included. So the A and B, and you can see we've got the little heart. Let's just check our other inputs, see if they're still working. A's working, B's working, 
and there on there we've got the shake option which will give us the little message that goes across the screen what I suggest you do is just go have a little play with this see what you can do with it maybe an extension task is this one here the icon maybe get some kind of an animation going so on this one here you could have maybe the heart flashing i've seen people do um ghosts and all kinds on this one just have a little play around with it. it's dead easy to get going and it's something that's just a little bit different from what you've maybe done in coding before good luck